Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you for joining us again. I'm Cynthia. I will be your host for this evening, and I'd like to welcome my guest. To my left, we have Miss Lavera, and to my right, we have Miss London. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to explore with me two women who are entrepreneurs, and they're going to share with you their story of how they got to where they are. We'll start to my left with Miss Lavera. Lavera. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and what led you to where you are now in your entrepreneurship. What led me to my entrepreneurship? Um, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, I got introduced to network marketing and that's where my whole entrepreneurial spirit comes from. That's where my beginning comes from, was getting introduced to network marketing. Okay. And a little bit about myself, oh, I've been in several multi-level marketing companies. Uh, right now I own my own company, it's called Love for Learning, and we are doing a Wealth Foundation building course. The next one starts May 3rd, and that's what we're doing right now. Okay, okay. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. And uh, London, I'll propose that same question to you. What is it that led you to where you are today? So basically for me, I worked at Quicken Loans, I was in a very lucrative position, but it came at a cost. So I was working overtime, basically uh, at least 50 hours a week, every week for years. Mm. And it was exhausting. It was, it was nice to have you know, a lot of money, but I wanted to do something else. And uh, working that job was very monotonous. Um, I also wanted to try to do something else. I actually called to quit my job in July of last year. Mm -hmm. And when I did, they talked me into staying and they're like, we got a lot of incentives about to roll out. And I stayed until October. And then I, I told them, actually, I just don't want to live with regrets. So I want to see what I'm made of. I want to see if I can earn what I'm earning here on my own. Mm -hmm and do something that I'm more interested in, something maybe more meaningful. And at the time, I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do, mm -hmm. but I worked on a specialty team at Quicken Loans. I worked with like the one percenters, the very wealthy clients at Charles Schwab, and they would like drop gems on me a lot of times, teaching me things, you know, when I, when I went over their loans with them. And one of the things that they taught me, something that I did not learn when I worked on like a normal team mm -hmm. on conventional or FHA loans was that wealthy people buy homes, take the equity out, buy another home, mm -hmm. <laughs> or they'll get a HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit against their home, use that as a bridge loan to buy another home and make it an income property. So I was thinking, of course, I'm not a millionaire like them. But what if I took the money I have and I tried to get an income property and then take the equity from that and do what they're doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what I did. Um, some of my friends, we had talked about doing that. And one friend in particular, uh, Carmen, I told her and she's like, let's go for it. Mm -hmm. And I am someone who thrives off of execution. So I was like, I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to do this, mm -hmm. but I'm going to figure it out. And everything just kind of lined up and fell into my lap the more I talked about it. I had actually talked to my trainer at the gym, mm -hmm. who's an entrepreneur, and I know him from Wayne State. And he introduced me to someone who also went to Wayne State that's been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. And from there, it just kind of took off. And with that business venture with my friend, I realized... I think I want to do something else for the community in Flint. Mm -hmm. So when you guys came in, I was reading that book, um, Tiny Homes in a Big City. Uh, so right now I'm working to try to get a grant or a business loan with the Small Business Development Center to kind of like fight blight in Flint, all of the vacant homes or lots that we have, mm -hmm. just kind of reoccupy the city without it being like, a gentrification type of thing 
uh, because when I was doing the remodeling for the house that we bought, which is not too far from here, it's off Carpenter and 475, um, the, some of the contractors would come in and say, why are you trying to put that in here? They're just going to tear it up. And I was realizing that there's a negative connotation associated with renters mm -hmm. and people from Flint. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm a renter. <laughs> I'm from Flint. Mm -hmm. I don't tear up my things. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't like that whole attitude about, um, you know, these people don't really deserve quality. Mm -hmm. So now I want to make it a mission to put more quality materials in homes that I buy or that I hopefully can build. And that's just what I'm doing right now. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> Making a difference, you ladies are. <laughs> All right, let's ask this question here. What did you, London, say to those individuals that said, oh, wait, hold on, you're going to quit your job? Wait, wait, hold on, you're going to, and you don't, you don't, and you don't, and there's always a you don't, you don't. What did you say to those negative naysayers? So honestly, most of the people in my life are very supportive, mm -hmm. uh, but I also... My mindset is different, and I guess we can you know, talk about it maybe a little later, but I, I think that once you are in a situation where you could have potentially lost your life, which I was in a car accident, about 14 cars or so, um, you look at life differently. So to me, my time means everything. Mm -hmm. And I, I told my, um, I actually told the, VP of communications at Quicken Loans, you know, because when I actually called and I was like, I'm actually quitting this time, I got several calls from the higher ups like, are you sure you've been here seven and a half years? And I was like, yeah. And they said, what are you going to do? And I was like, I'm not sure. But that was really, and that wasn't even negative because they, they said they supported me like, no, we get it. You know, you don't want to live with regrets. But um, everybody supported me for the most part. I know that some people think I'm crazy because, <laughs> um, you know, if I quit in October and I definitely would have cleared six figures by December mm -hmm. and now, you know, I don't bring in $10,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I'm just winging it, but I am confident enough in myself to think that I can get back to that point right. and it means something. Amen. Amen. It's doing what you, you know, you have that passion for it, so that makes a difference uh, yes. is, in and of itself. <laughs> All right, let's ask uh, Ms. Lavera. Let's ask you the same question. Okay, can you repeat the question? Please? Yes. What did you say? What would you say to the naysayers? That, because there's always someone that says, What? You're, gonna, you're not going to work, you're, but you don't have, you know, there's always something that they're saying negatively to impact your decision to not, you know, to be an to be a entrepreneur and not have to rely upon someone else making the decision. So how, what did you say or what would you say to those naysayers? So in the beginning when I first got started, I listened. Mm -hmm. And it, I was, it was discouraging, I was discouraged. Um, then I got introduced to self-development, which changed my whole world. Then I understood that they, they're speaking about their experiences mm -hmm. and they may not necessarily mean that they're you know being negative, they're just trying to look out for my best self-interest. Mm -hmm. But it's my life. And like London said, I don't want to live with regrets. Mm -hmm. I have, right now, two adult children, kind of. I have a 21-year-old and a 19-year-old. I have a grandbaby. Mm -hmm. So the, it, everything now is all about me. When I was younger and I could explore different things, I did. But at, the, you know, at a reserve point of I can't do too much mm -hmm. or I can't go too far because I still have to be a responsible parent. Right. And I can't invest this much in my business I have two kids to look after. But now, it's, I have just me. It is the, it's, it's very liberating. I enjoy it a lot. And the, <laughs> the naysayers, you know, you, you're talking from your limitations, and your limitations and what you believe you can do is not the same thing as what I believe I can do. Amen. I believe that if I put my whole heart into it, that I can do it. I believe that I'm a conqueror. And, you know, God go, you know he'll guide me on my path and introduce me to the right people. Amen. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, ladies. So it sounds like for both of you that you're, you're, the, the businesses that you've started, the dreams, the ideas that you've, you've had and that you're, you're working for now, it sounds as though they're, they're making an impact in individuals' lives. Tell us a little bit what your, your business, how it is impacting individuals. So I just finished a class, Wealth Foundation Building, mm -hmm. and it's literally because I've tried so many different things and I've tried so hard and I had kids and responsibilities and 
because I live life on my own terms, I did. I jumped from job to job to job to job. My resume is a mess. Mm -hmm. But I didn't care because I knew even I knew I had skills, mm -hmm. I had experience and I was educated. So I could always get a job. Mm -hmm. Now it may not have always been the ideal job. It was never a career and I never wanted it to be a career move. I just wanted an income to support my family. Mm -hmm. So now I just really try to do things for the community. So my class that I just had, one of my students, oh my goodness, I was so proud of her. Two, three of my students were family members, mm -hmm. two of my kids and then my nephew. And he bought two cars because he was like, well, I'm gonna get a loan. I got this, you know, he had a job. And I'm like, no, don't get a loan. You're young, buy a car. If you can afford a car payment, you can afford to save and buy a car. I was so happy when he actually took my advice. He bought a car. It was a little beat up, saved again, and bought another car. So now they're selling the first car, have a whole nother car, said, and now you have no payments. That was a blessing. My other student, which is my daughter, expanded her business. Mm -hmm. And her business is growing, and she doesn't have a job. She has her own apartment, she, t and she has a baby. She takes care of her and her son without any financial help from me or the state or anybody else, mm -hmm. solely from her business, and I'm so proud of her. And those are like my two biggest success story so far okay mm -hmm. okay well congratulations thank you yeah okay so london i propose the same question to you what you see what you're doing in the community Tell, exactly how i know you said that you had the the tiny homes and and you wanted to be able to share you know quality as opposed to just giving you something and saying be satisfied what exactly how how are you doing it in the community right now so that project is in its infancy mm -hmm. so that is something i'm working on trying to get funding for trying to find the right demographic for but the goal is to utilize this potentially dead space that mm -hmm. we have here um and make the street full again you know because right. it's, it's unoccupied mostly in a lot of areas but also um so I talked to a couple of nonprofits. Actually, Pam was one person. I don't mm -hmm. know if she told you. Uh, so we basically went over potentially having a tiny community that would serve the elderly that is still independent, mm -hmm. but um, you know doesn't necessarily need to use the the full length of their home. Mm -hmm. So typically, even if you're not elderly. Just think about it. When you're at home, you're probably just in like two places mostly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the older you get, if you have a colonial style home, you know, you're not going to try to go up and down those stairs right. anymore. It would be better if everything was closer and tight knit. I also thought about maybe doing it for um, women transitioning from like a uh, domestic violence type of situation that need housing. Because typically, if you are a victim of domestic violence, you are dependent upon your abusive partner. Mm -hmm. um, I thought about potentially doing it for veterans. Mm -hmm. So I'm still working that out. But the goal is for it to focus on low income mm -hmm. and potentially mimic what is happening in Detroit. Um, because there's a tiny home village in Detroit, okay. Cass Community. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go tour it, but I ended up calling them and so they told me, you know, by the book we wrote, it has everything in there that you'll need to know. So that's what I'm reading right now, trying to figure out, you know, what direction to go. But so far, the other business is just, you know, a single family resident mm -hmm. that I rent out. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a blessing. <laughs> you know, when we go through things, we all have found ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, in a position that we're not proud of, but through determination, we, we've managed, and with God's grace and mercy, we've managed to persevere. And so I ask you, LaVera, if you were to, to if, if you had someone that was thinking about starting up a business that had ideas of, you know, being, being a help to the community, helping people to get back on their feet when they've had financial disasters, how would you, how would you, and what would you say to somebody if they were, if they were, trying to go through that and they were trying to think about what they could do to maybe in, you know be inspired by you listening to your story go for it absolutely go for it 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 okay um there are so many especially here in genesee county there's so much free resources for opening up your own business 
I know a lot of people offer a lot of paid for services online, but in Genesee County, there is unlimited free financial, I mean, not free financial, but free resources to help you open up your own business. So two years ago, I went to Genesee Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And I went in there, she was like, how may I help you? I said, well, I know y'all help people with jobs, I mean, not with jobs, but with opening up their own business. This is my business idea. How do I make my idea earn me enough money so I can quit my job? Mm -hmm. And she sat there and talked to me. She went back, got all these pamphlets, all this information came back, was like, this is where you start, then you do this, then you do this, then you do this. You have questions, you call me, this is my email. She gave me all her information. Um, there is a class in Flint uh, sponsored by the U of M. Mm -hmm. And I think the chamber is a part of that as well, but it's free to entrepreneurs. You just got to know when to sign up and sign up. It's a six week class, everything is absolutely free. There's just a abundance of information out there, but you have to go, you have to know where to look and who to talk to, but the Genesee Chamber of Commerce is like the best first place to go. Okay. Um, well, small for. business, be, what is it? SBC. That's what I was referring to, right? SBDC, Small SBDC. Business Development Center. Yes, That's Kettering. They're in Kettering. Mm -hmm. And they're amazing. Oh, they're amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that would be one of the places that we would start. Just have your idea and take it there and, 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 and don't just let it fester. We've got to let it grow. Okay. So for you, London, <laughs> how would you, in, in what way do, would you give advice for someone to get started? If I had, you know, had the ideas but just didn't know how to get, get it started. I, for sure, to Lavera's point, will say, you know, just jump in there. Mm -hmm. just, just write it down. For me, I'm, some say, overly organized. <laughs> so I keep a journal mm -hmm. of what I do for the day, what I intend on doing for the day, who I need to call, what I should research. And uh, when I reached out to SBDC, it was actually because of a page I found on Instagram and this girl was teaching you how to get grant money. Mm -hmm. So th the business I had with my friend was 100% funded by us. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I can't use all of my money. You know, there's got to be some help somewhere. So I just Googled it, mm -hmm. and SBDC came up. They uh, basically pair you with, like, a, an advisor. Mm -hmm. You check in with them. You have to get your business plan together something I'm working on, something that I continuously have to rework as more numbers come in, mm -hmm. as more ideas come in. Mm -hmm. I would say definitely try to think of your business name mm -hmm. and how you want to brand it, how you want to market it, what your budget is if you have it. Uh, what you know, Take a look at maybe your support system. Do you have friends and family that will share a post, mm -hmm. you know, something that they can do for free. Mm -hmm. Do you have someone that will maybe buy your product or advertise your product? And just don't get discouraged because, and I say this all the time, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I, <laughs> I knew exactly what I was doing at my job because mm -hmm. I'd done it for seven and a half right. years. So uh, nothing grows in your comfort zone. So, um, if you're stagnant, you know, there's nothing, nothing's going to come from that, really. I, so I never really want to be comfortable. I'm okay with challenges and whatnot. Uh, for me, I just definitely try to do something every day for my business. Uh, even when I say I'm not going to work on my business, mm -hmm. I schedule that like I still have a job. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you have to schedule, though. I noticed yeah. that in life. <laughs> if you don't schedule, it's going to be on the wayside. Yeah, so yeah. I do notice that. <laughs> Um, if you were, let me ask you this, what is it, because we have things that, 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 that drive us, mm -hmm. what would you say is your driving force, what motivates you to get up in the morning and say, you know what, I'm going to keep on going, because it's got to be a little difficult when you're, when you, when you're used to a, an income of such, and then you realize that, okay, I don't have it coming in on a regular, like, I'm, <laughs> you know, you don't get that paycheck every week, no. so, <laughs> you know, you, you, you have had to make adjustments in your life to go without at certain times. So how did you, what would you say is your motivating or your fueling force behind your drive and determination? And I know that's one of them. But what else fuels? What is that one little thing that, that, that you say, oh, I'm going to do it today anyway, even though you don't want to? What drives you? So um, Maxine Waters has a saying, reclaiming my time. Mm -hmm. For me, 
It is about having complete agency over my day and all that I do. I love that I can book a flight and I don't have to get clearance for it anymore. Mm -hmm. I love that um, I can work as late as I want to if I want to. I can wake up as early as I want to and start work. There's no limitations on my work day anymore. Whereas like I'm a morning person and before it's like, nope, the absolute earliest you can work is at seven. I'm up at five, you know? So that's two hours where I could be doing something. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just knowing that, because a lot of people see it as money, which is of course something I liked having, <laughs> but it's not just money, it's the things that you can do with your income when you control it solely. Mm -hmm. You can designate your day and you can run it exactly how you like. Mm -hmm. So for me, I guess it's a little bit of control, but it's mostly just agency over my time. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's your motivation. <laughs> Let me ask you, LaVere, what motivates you? I know you said you have a grandson now. So what motivates, what motivates you? What fuels your passion to keep going and to help others obtain financial freedom? Um, for me, because I'm a parent and I have two kids and I have a grandson, they are part of my motivation. But they are also, they don't live with me anymore, so mm -hmm. it's not as immediate as it was when they were living with me. It's not this constant, oh, they're watching you, you have to, my kids do their own thing. Mm -hmm. So it's more so is me wanting to be true to myself. So my, um, I'm part Indian and my Indian name is Guiding Light. Mm -hmm. And me being true to myself means I, that's who I wanna be. I want to be a guiding light, a guiding force in my community, in my family, um, and anywhere I go. Any room that I step in, I want people to be blessed having had met me mm -hmm. and that's my that's my determination that's, that's my goal is when whoever i meet in this life i want them to say i vera was a cool person you know i really learned a lot from her or i was blessed because i met her or she motivated me she helped me that's mm -hmm. what i'm going for okay so what what you can give to others mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen i don't know about you but i'm learning a lot <laughs> all right let me ask you the last question Hmm. To who or to what, to whom or to what, would you attribute your success, your drive? What would you attribute it to? I mean, when you, and don't answer too quickly, because I want you to think about this one, because we are, we're always easy, quick to say, we can say our kids, we can say, but what, what is it that you would attribute to? Was it growing up? Was it having an encounter on the job, what fueled your desire to become the entrepreneur that you are today? The way I grew up. Okay. I don't wanna say this, however I wanna be transparent. Um, my mom is amazing, mm -hmm. amazing, beautiful woman, but she gave me the absolute worst financial advice <laughs> somebody could give to another person. <laughs> But because she's my mom, I listened. Mm -hmm. Because I trusted her, mm -hmm. I listened. And I, because I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know any better. Right. Financial, you know, I went to school and I got my bachelor's degree. I am six figures in debt, in student loan debt. Okay. There's no credit repair for that. Mm -hmm. There's no magic potion for that. That is just some serious debt. Six figures? Yes. And I haven't been blessed yet, because 2021 gonna be my year. I've been blessed yet to make six figures in a year, but to be that far in debt, and this student loan debt is um, compound interest mm -hmm. debt. I don't even have compound interest income. I'm working on it, but you know, that was, that was a wake up call to me. Like, you know what? I gotta teach other people not to fall in the same money mm -hmm. trap. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. Yes. That even, that that somebody would even extend that kind of income to you is retarded with no income. But you know, so I, I can't fix the laws, I can't change student mm -hmm. debt, yes. but I can teach and yes. I can educate. And that's my God-given gift is to teach. Yes. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, well, I thank you. All right, London, we'll ask you that same <laughs> question. What would you, or to whom would you attribute your desire to be where you are and to be an entrepreneur, to be a female, a woman entrepreneur. What, 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 
What would you attribute that to or to whom? So there's not just one thing or one person. Mm -hmm. I would say I definitely want to thank myself <laughs> because I have had a couple of experiences that could have very well just sent me into a lifelong depression. Uh, one being leaving an abusive relationship at such a young age. I didn't really tell anyone. It was very much so cold turkey. And after that, I realized I want to be more assertive. Mm -hmm. I want to ask for the things that I want when I want it. I don't want to be, um, you know, this quiet person that is just well liked. Mm -hmm. And th the things that I need are, are never met, you know, because people are accustomed to, uh, for one, treating uh, black women a certain way in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So I left that situation more confident overall uh, because, you know, going to court and just representing myself, you mm -hmm. know, in a pretrial, and that's not something that I've ever had to do before. So I, I definitely gathered strength from that. Um, my accident, again, I definitely had survivor's remorse for a minute. I was not sure why I, why I was still here. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the time, I mean, y'all have known me my whole life. You know, my mom spoils me, always has. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for me, uh, it seemed like the end of the world to be, and I was always kind of like a nerd. So when I had to take a medical withdrawal from school and I lost my, you know, my brand new car, everything just kind of stopped for me. Mm -hmm. So overcoming that, uh, finishing out my degree, and then also um, not too long ago, I was diagnosed with epilepsy. So I was already at my job, making great money, doing whatever I wanted to do. I can come and go as I please. I don't have any kids. And then that kind of just stopped me in my tracks. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't legally drive anymore. You have seizures. So for six months, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that happened to me twice, um, having seizures and basically losing my license for a time. But I'm also surrounded by... Uh, entrepreneur women as well. So my friend that I went into business with, she also owns a bakery. Mm -hmm. uh, my best friend is a therapist. Mm -hmm. My other best friend, you know, has a business now. So I'm just surrounded. And my sister has a business. And then uh, growing up, like when my mom was going to nursing school, I went with her to my. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was sitting on, you know, in the cafeteria reading her books too. So I kind of draw from all of that. And then also just I, I'm a forward thinker now. Mm -hmm. Before, if something bad happened to me, I would immediately claim, like, this is a bad day. I'm having a bad week. Mm -hmm. This month has been horrible. Whereas now I look at it and I put it in a time capsule. Something annoying or bad happened to me. But that's not it for me. So I want to, I try to stay positive. Obviously, I have my days. I'm human. But um, I attribute my mindset to those three traumatic incidents, and then also the people I'm surrounded by, everybody has a very much so go-getter mindset. Mm -hmm. And then also, I just think I'm limitless in what I can accomplish. I just don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I feel like I can always figure it out because mm -hmm. I figured out problems for my employer <laughs> for mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. so why not myself? Right, why, why not do for them, do mm -hmm. for you what you've always done? and enabled others to, to be successful on your back. Right. I agree. Well, ladies, I want to thank you. I really <laughs> do. I want to ask you and just leave, your, leave with this one question. If, if you could just tell one person one word, one word, what would you tell them? Oh, you said one word. Just one word, because we are summing it up. Um... Faith. Mm. You read my mind. As you, okay. you, you have to be. You have to have faith. You have to have faith. You have to believe that you can do it. Mm -hmm. You have to believe that it's possible. And there's going to be so many things, not just naysayers, but actually things that as you're moving forward that knock you back. And you just have to believe that what you're believing in and what you're working towards is worth it. And the more that you believe, the more you push yourself. And the mm -hmm. more you push yourself the faster stuff will start speeding up, and, and you'll have it. The greater you the reward. It. Okay, London, one word, and I'll let you explain that, though. 
Uh, resilience. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think it's very important to be mm -hmm. resilient. Yes. Because sure enough, things will happen. Yes. <laughs> things will happen. People will try you. Um, there could be, it could be something with your health, you know, like for instance with me, it could be a relationship that's trying you. It could just be a matter of circumstance, like my car accident, wrong mm -hmm. place, wrong time. Mm -hmm. So it's important to be resilient and know that you can come out of whatever situation as long as you are on this side of the ground. I think the most important mindset for an entrepreneur is just to have hope and have faith in the process. You know, I, I talked a, lot, a little bit about this in my talk today, but um, hope, hopelessness is the worst thing that could happen to an entrepreneur because you know, there's a, you're going to have a lot of days, and I have a lot of founder friends, and sometimes the the most uh, the biggest step that you can take is getting out of bed in the morning. Like sometimes things are going like everything's going wrong, and you don't even want to get out of bed. You don't want to check your emails. You don't want to do any work because you feel like nothing that you can do is going to fix the issues, or you know you're not making enough uh, traction. You're not making enough strides, and so you don't even want to work on the company anymore. And that to me is like a lack of hope. Like you just don't believe anything that you do. That there anything in the world is going to change your trajectory. Um, so I would say just continue to believe and and find whatever, do whatever you can, whether that's going to church, but that's reading for me, that's reading the Bible. For me, that's praying um, to make sure that I'm always, that I always have some type of hope. Because I'll be honest, like there are days that that hope is just a little flame, but that's enough to get me going and still going. And so I would just say, do whatever you can to find inspiration, find hope and have faith. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Miss LeBaron. Thank you, Miss London. Welcome. I thank you You're for welcome. being on this panel. And I would like to thank our viewers once again for tuning in to Sister Sisters, ladies and gentlemen, the forum where we hope that something we've said has inspired you, encouraged you, or uplifted you. And I ask that on Tuesday evenings, we ask that you tune in to Safe Spaces, ladies and gentlemen, comes on at 7 o'clock on Tuesday evenings, the space where you can share anxiety, stress, depression, ladies and gentlemen, a safe space. I encourage you to log on. I also encourage you to log on to fairhavensda.org as well as esdac.org, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in all month long for Sister to Sisters. Have a blessed night.